Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Warhammer Quest with me, Bring It Dawn. So off camera, I played a little bit more, not a whole lot. Um, I ended up buying these rings from uh, Wolfspock and put them on the Slayer, and also gave him the Magical Acorn, uh, since he is a higher level than my Marauder. And so he hits harder, and he's a little more important to me because he's a higher level. I put more time into him. He also has uh, more items that gives him strength. So he can't really compete with the Marauder as far as damage output goes. Kind of. The Marauder has more attacks per turn. But the uh, uh, Slayer seems like he might be stronger. Yeah, because his crit... Yeah, I don't know. I like him more than the Marauder. The Marauder does have a lot of potential. What I really need is for my Grey Wizard to learn Blade of Night so that I can make them both efficient or more effective. Um, off camera, I also did get the Forge Master's Hammer. I think it actually has the same amount of damage as the Fine Hammer, but it adds plus one melee attack. Yeah, all right. Also in the last episode, I mistook Flensburg as being in the Reichland, and I was thinking that uh, the ninth quest was going to be the black quest. I'm pretty sure it's right there. But I was wrong about that, and Flensburg is in Sterland, and that'll be the ninth quest that should unlock the black quest in the region. Uh, the adventurers passed through a venom thicket, a particularly spiky and lethal copse of trees uh, where both fauna and flora are deadly. Alright, my Bright Wizard has minus six max wounds. That's rough. Alright, welcome to Flensburg. A silly name for a town. So I don't see any identifiers for what we're going to be facing. Actually, that might be a skeleton back there. Alright, Flensburg is small. It barely deserves a title village, and is more of a hamlet that happens to be nestled around a temple of Shalia the goddess of healing and mercy. Word of your arrival quickly spreads through the village's meager population, and you are soon accosted by the village chief, flanked by a priestess of, priestess of Shalia and sundry other concerned residents. A greetings, adventurers, hails the chief. Your arrival could be no timelier. Praise be to the mistress of mercy. Your warriors sigh in collective recognition of the familiar. No doubt more downtrodden citizens need you to go raiding into the nearest dungeon to retrieve something or for someone. Oh well. It's a living. It's the orc, states the old man. So far, so familiar. We need you to give something back. That's new. He produces a rather large orcish tooth and holds it up. The priestess averts her eyes as if to look as if to look at it would burn her. It's said to belong to an old war boss who rampaged around these parts centuries ago. One of our youths went into the barrow of the war boss and stole it from the corpse. He brought it back to the village, and ever since we've had trouble. The Greenskins have never bothered to come to get it and get it back, but there's a curse on it, make no mistake. The lad who stole it fell down a well, and we lost our blacksmith two days back. He got kicked in the head while shoeing a horse. Alright, well that's, uh, that is new. Don't think I have anything to sell, so we're probably ready to set out. Flame bullets, silver bullets. Recommended level 5. How many level 5s do I have? At least 2. 3. Alright, so yeah. I can do this. We'll bring both the dwarves and probably... Maybe the Archmage? Both the dwarves, the Bright Wizard, and the Archmage. That should be fine. I wouldn't mind having the Witch Hunter with me, either. Maybe something like that? Or the Warrior Priests... ...instead. Because he's closer to being level 5, that might be better. Because he can give... Or I can just bring all 
level fives to be safe. That might be a better course of action. I'm split. Yes to it, all level fives. We can see the Slayer in action with all of his new equipment. Oh, crap, didn't read the thing. Well, wish I knew what it said. So I have to choose who carries the uh, the tooth, right? So the warriors enter the dungeon in search of the dead war boss, with the express purpose of returning the tooth that is cursed. One of your warriors will have to take on the burden of holding the tooth. He's probably the tankiest. Uh, the tooth bearer must carry the tooth until it's returned to the war boss's corpse. While the tooth is in the adventurer's possession, he suffers from a hex and will find it more difficult to strike down his foes. Be quick to give it back, or you may find yourself another victim of the curse. Alright, well, he's there to tank anyway, not to, uh. kill. So it works out. I do feel bad about missing that dialogue, though. I heard the, uh... The text. Alright, Kristoff and Dietrich is confronted by a slumped, cowed figure crawling towards them, calling for help in a piteous voice. Upon reaching the stranger, the warrior realizes that offering aid was not a good idea. The figure slumps in their arms, dead, his cow falling to once... Alright, oh, we've read this before. Several times, actually, I think. Alright, let's see our uh, Slayer in action. Yeah, I mean, we knew that was going to happen because of the... Uh, The cursed tooth. That is really bad. All right. Well, that doesn't bode well. It's fine. We'll uh, focus on this guy first. Well, he's probably gonna go down here anyway. May as well go out swinging. Or, if I can get him to attack this guy, he can draw aggro. But he has to hit. Yeah, I was asking too much.
can take out this guy this turn. Almost. Um... I'm gonna kill him. Perfect. That's okay. Let's we'll use the amulet of healing for this. There we go. Vicious River Troll. Well, this is the uh, final room. Just gonna put a hurting on this guy. I'm gonna save some of my bonus power. I didn't even attack with my Iron Breaker. I feel silly. Okay, we can take this guy out real quick. Should probably take this guy out this turn with two marked for judgments. Good, now I just have to worry about the uh, the bosses. We don't have to worry about him regenerating his health. I'm gonna try to hit this guy once to draw aggro. Did not work. I can run this way.
That's annoying. Sorry, we'll be okay. Oh, we might not be okay. Let's see if I can take him out with this. Guess not. Um. I just attack him and kill him. Or not. a little problematic. Let's hope this uh, brings him back. Works for me. Uh, let's see about taking this guy out. I need to take out bodies. healing. Let's, um, I keep him alive. What do we have? Lesser scroll of healing. That'll come in. Let's just go and use that on him. No one's focusing him, so keep him alive and he can bring this guy back if he needs to. go dodging all those attacks well spoke too soon that's okay let's have him actually let's see if we can hit him once or twice then what he can do is one-shot him, get a death blow. Might be able to finish this guy off. Perfect. No, it's close. But no cigar. Job well done. Fine elven sword. Alright, in the center of the chamber rests the ancient skeletal remains of a large orc. It could only be the war boss. He seems surprisingly intact, except for the notable absence of a large tusk like tooth from the bottom of his jutting jawbone. The tooth bearer moves forward and wedges the missing tooth back into the jaw. Immediately he feels better. The curse is lifted. However, the taint of magic continues to seep into the room. The party steps back warily, even as the green witch fire lights the skeletal orc's eyes. The head jerkily rises and the jaw moves up and down. A deep booming laughter emanates around the chamber. 
It seems like the war boss hasn't quite finished with the adventurers yet. A skeletal hand rises and points at the former toothbearer. Mork wants you, booms the ethereal voice. With that, the fire goes out of the orc's eye sockets and the skeleton falls back in place. The party look on dumbfounded and transfixed, only belatedly realizing that behind them, the river troll's corpse has started to get up. The curse has been lifted, but you must fight the river troll once again if you wish to escape. And it's not my turn. Oh boy. Well, if he attacks the witch hunter, he can't move, and we should be able to just uh, bring him back. So no big deal. At least he can hit now, so that's nice. No. Oh. Your mighty blow is very risky. Because if you miss, you've wasted your entire turn. Alright, damage away. Can't get just a little more damage out of this turn. Oh boy. Well. As long as we get ambushed again, it'll be fine. Your warriors finally put the beast down for good. He won't be getting up anytime soon. Not risking another dangerous encounter, the warrior quickly head out of the dungeon exit. The warriors, I guess. Alright. Job all done. Get my witch hunters ready to level up, who I think is the most viable part of our team. As your party emerges from the barrow, they see a chest marked with the rune of Shalia placed before the entrance. On opening the chest, they find a generous gift from the priestess, and one that can easily be put to use. Ooh. So I'm pretty sure the Black Quest is level 6. Uh, where is this guy at? Let's give him one of the big ones. And... It's my Iron Breaker. He also gets one of the big ones. Alright, back to town. Oh, 5,000. Alright, it's going to be a little while before we can level him up. Mantle of Illusions. Alright, so I think if we go back to Warp Ad, it unlocks the Black Quest. Is that... I don't know if I want to give him that or not, because it doesn't give him extra attacks, and I do have him equipped with the Shadow Sword now. Which does give him 68 damage, or 6 to 8 damage, an increased chance to hit with a melee weapon, and plus 3 strength. I might go get that. Then he'll have both blue weapons, and then I can unlock the black quest off camera. Because if I leave to go to work bad, this will disappear. So let's go grab this real quick, and then we'll, uh... 
They'll probably call it an episode. I don't want to bring all level fives on this one. I should probably still bring the healer. Because he's a better healer than the Grey Wizard is. I say bring the Archmage as well. I'm gonna, I'm gonna regret not having another healer, so. Alright, not gonna bother reading that. Oh, I don't have a witch hunter. This could be a big, big oopsie. Yeah, these are... yeah, this isn't gonna go well. Uh, is it... Yeah, you still can't one-shot him. That's not good. This is already not going well. I'm probably gonna just leave the dungeon after this attempt. I'm not, I'm not doing with this party. We'll just go unlock the black quest, uh, cause if undead are popping up like that, I'm not, it's not worth it. Not without a witch hunter. Now when you leave a dungeon like that, you don't maintain the experience or anything, but you do keep all the items that you find, and uh, money that you find. I can always grind for the, uh, ooh. That'd also be really good to have Oak and Amulet. That's okay. Quiver of Fire, don't want that. All right, it's about unlocking the Black Quest. If we go adventuring immediately, I think we travel this way, it should unlock it. I have to go back and forth a couple of times. I have to go like warden and then up and then south or something. It takes a little finagling because it doesn't just unlock automatically. Oh, here we go, the Idol of Mork. The adventurers are taking a well-earned respite at a coaching inn when the door slams open and a man in a wide-brimmed hat and dusty traveling cloak enters. His loud entrance garners him a few annoyed glances from the customers. They only return to their previous conversations once the newcomer closes the door and stops the lantern light inharmoniously flickering. Barkeep, an ale, Bugmans if you have it, he announces across the common room, causing further annoyance. 
Oblivious to the Rancor, the uh, stranger scans the area, his gaze settling on the adventurers. Ah, uh, there you are, he shouts and strolls over. The inn's customers instantly transfer their annoyance from him to your party. It is you, isn't it? The ones who saved the donkey in Marburg, who found the halfling son in Vorchdorf? Uh, says the man, his tone still booming to th so the whole ground floor can hear. Uh, the interrupts in a gale of laughter. The mirth aimed directly at your party. Bless Sigmar, for he has sent our saviors. The mules and halflings of the realm can sleep safer tonight, announces one wag, triggering another bout of ra raucous laughter. This man is doing your warrior band's burgeoning reputation no favors. A warning growl from the largest warrior in your party quickly quells the laughter. The stranger sits down at the party's table uninvited, and seemingly ignorant of the com commotion he has caused. I've been tracking you for weeks. News of your heroics is making its way across Sterling and beyond. He takes off his hat as the innkeeper brusquely places a flagon of ale on the table. Professor Otto Schwarzblatt of the University of Nuln, he says, holding out his hand and then lowering it when nobody offers to shake. This doesn't faze him. He takes a good quaff of the ale and continues. I've been monitoring greenskin migrations over the past decade, and like inclement weather, I'm afraid we're due for an invasion. I've heard terrible rumors. The Black Fang orcs have moved from Mount Gunbad and are massing just beyond the Winter Seath Pass in Whistleland. They have a new war boss, Gorgut. He slew the old one, got rid of any competition, and then led the orcs out of Gunbad. For the first time, the professor seems aware that his voice is carrying beyond its intended audience and lowers it. Thing is, while the orcs gather in the border in the border princes, Gorgut isn't with them. He's already here on this side of the Black Mountains. My contacts tell of a demented orc shaman who has led Gorgut to this very province. They're searching for something, an idol of their dreadful god or an idol of their dreadful orc gods, a relic from a past invasion. Once it's, once it's in Gorgut's hands, the spirit of Mork will pervade, issuing in a wa to rival Azog the Slaughterer. One of the other patrons rises from his seat and turns in the midst of pointing an accusing finger at the professor. A quick chop to the throat from the closest warrior downs the man. He lays in a crumpled heap by your party's table, discouraging any others that overheard Schwarzblut's ramblings from doing anything other than supping their beer. I think I know where the idol is, says the professor, producing a tattered map from his cloak. I've plotted past orc invasions through the region, and there is a vortex pattern to their movement that centers around this point here. He jabs the map, making a desolate. He jabs the map, marking a desolate area of Sterland. I need you to take me to this place. He notes your warrior's doubtful looks. If it's money that's an issue, I have the ability to draw university funds from any guild-recognized moneylender. The promise of funding from a large and prestigious institution as the University of Nuln has an immediate effect on your party. Gone is the cynicism, quickly replaced with an adventurous spirit. The party leave the inn, ignoring the sneers and smirks of the of the other clientele. Ugh, there's a lot to read. Alright, the Idol of Mork has been unlocked. I think it's for level 6. I'll have to look. But yeah, there's the, uh... There's the Black Quest. Another two earthquakes on the way to uh, Wolfbach, or Wolfsbach. Alright, then I'm going to call it here. Uh, in the next episode, we might pursue the Black Quest. I'll see how much I can level up off camera. Um, and also what the recommended level is. You really need to pay attention to the recommended... The recommended levels for the quests because uh, they will easily overwhelm you if you are not the appropriate level or over level over level is probably better but anyway kind of call it here off camera i'm going to pursue probably this the mourn forge full helm for the uh ogre now i'll do some grinding see if i can't get everyone to at least level five maybe even level six 
don't know, we'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next episode.